uh, it was very clear to us that if we were going to continue building Biz.TV, we were going to fail. Man plans and God laughs, basically. I know it sounds cliche, but um, صرت أكثر متعلق بربي. It was an existential crisis بالنسبة لي. صراحة it helped me become more philosophical. Even if you're a smart person, you eventually find out that your opinion is usually you know stupid. صراحة. And my content sucks. People are just gonna scroll. They're used to doing this. Chuk chuk chuk. That's a very deep and profound question. Who are you? This one is a bit scary, Sarah. Then you're giving everyone free electricity and free energy. This was exactly what I wanted to do. I love this idea. Reach out. <laughs> Reach out. Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of the AI Best Business Show. Today with me, I have a special guest, Omar Dweik. Uh, what he's doing is fascinating. I'll let Omar introduce himself. Omar, welcome to the show. Salam, Ahmed. Thanks for having me. Uh, and it's me, Omar Dweik. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Bith.TV. Um, and um, I'm really excited to be with you. Okay. Omar, uh, doing research, you're an athlete first. You played for the national team. You were a national team player under 21. <laughs> and you went to a startup co-founder. Uh, who are you? What's your career and who are you? That's a very deep and profound question. <laughs> who are you? Um, but um, I, I'll start off by telling you that um, I wanted to become uh, a professional football player. Alhamdulillah, I was on the right path to becoming one until uh, one day when I was 17 years old, I um, basically... Uh, Injured my my knee pretty badly. I tore my uh, fully ruptured my ACL and tore my meniscus. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the knee parts, but those are the two parts I, I injured pretty badly. But Alhamdulillah, yani from that point, it was hella looking back then it was an existential crisis. Uh, but um, I asked myself, okay, but, you know, between the ages of 17 to 21. Um, I yes. underwent um, a series of uh, multiple knee surgeries and even an ankle surgery. So basically, uh, what is it that I want to do? And what is it that gets me excited? Um, I had to dig deeper into my childhood. Uh, what got me excited as a kid? So I, I noticed that the two things that got me out, the one thing that really got me excited was the notion of um, building and designing things and the potential of having them sold to others. So um, um, when I was 19 years old, um, so my, my first injury happened, my first surgery was when I was 17. Then the Masr 19 um, I was in college. I was still playing football, but I was grasping that my career was eventually going to come to a premature end. Right. So I started my first business, a small scale business called Arabizi, which was a streetwear brand. Uh, in California, where you're at, um, Love it. and and uh, it was a streetwear brand. Uh, launched an e-commerce website, handled the fulfillment of the orders, customer uh, support, um, logistics, everything basically. Well, alhamdulillah, even though I didn't have a passion for fashion, but I I knew that this was exactly what I want to do. You know, building, designing stuff, selling them to others. Well, um, ever since that startup, uh, ever since that business, Arabizi. I went on to start uh, a few other uh, small-scale startups, and I also worked at a venture-backed startup. So, alhamdulillah, that's how the transition uh, happened in a nutshell. Is the brand, does, does our business still exist, or uh, did La, you shut it down? I, I shut it down. I, um, I made, it was two things that um, yeah, and it contributed to its uh, downfall. Mm -hmm. The first thing was I don't have a passion for fashion. I could okay. care less about uh, fashion <laughs> in, in general. But yeah, and it wasn't the best fit. Yes. Um, plus, I made some, yeah, and it was, hey, at the time, it was you know, ballsy, but risky moves. I invested a lot of money into inventory, <laughs> from, into two basically different segments. One segment did well. The, the second segment, I couldn't liquidate. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and yeah. What, yeah, I said, you know, I don't have a passion for fashion. <laughs> so, you know, why try to recover from it? <laughs> exactly. uh, I, I shut it down, basically. I want to... <laughs> You mentioned you, know, you got an ACL, <laughs> ages 17 to 21 is where the 
الاتليت از ان برايم هي هي يو ايذر ميك ات اور دونت ميك ات وين يو ار ان ذات ايج اند جيتنج ان اي سي ال اي نو ماي برادر از باسكتبول باسكتبول بلاير هي جوت ان اي سي ال هي هي ديد ان اي سيرجري اند هيز تيم ادفانس بيكوز هي هاد 6 مانث اوف ريكفري وايل هي واز فالينج بيهايند How yeah. how was your mental state to overcome that? Because this mental state is an important. I know in startups you have up, yeah. ups and downs. I want to understand your mental state and how you think about stuff. Uh, back then, <laughs> you mean back, back now, then when I had back back then and even now, like uh, whenever your startup fail uh, has some failures or faces problems, what is your mental state in thinking about problems? صراحة it helped me become more philosophical okay. and. Okay. Uh, You have to become a philosopher يعني, عشان to, to endure the ups and the downs yeah. uh, And at the same time um, Back then uh, يعني, I know it sounds cliche But I was a lot more familiar with God I was talking about everything You have to try You have to try But basically there are more things bigger than you But at the same time And there, there's a saying that I learned back then Or I still يعني, carry it on with me uh, to, to this day Which is man plans and God laughs basically So I don't know I said that Back then or even now With the ups and downs I said try your best Don't get uh, in a certain plan Try to do your best And the rest is on Allah I don't get in the plans basically So That helps start- the ups and the downs. Later on, you started uh, Beth uh, TV. Yes. How how did that idea come to life? Like, what was the conversations you had with your surrounding? Uh, if I was sitting with your friends or co-founders at this time, and you were talking to me, what was the conversation like? So you guys came up with that idea. Um, actually, it it came out of a pivot. I'll, okay. I'll tell you about the story. It's it's a long story. I'll try to give you the compressed version. Um, basically in 2019, <laughs> I came back from the States. Um, I finished my master's at the time in sports industry management. Uh, oh, I have a passion for, for tech and sports. Um, in 2019, I actually founded a, a startup called Digital Sport, which was a SaaS company that provided professional sports teams and leagues with um, their own mobile applications to engage with their fans. Um, offer them season tickets, um, um, merchandise, and exclusive content. We would build it, uh, the tech and maintain it for them. They would just like take it and um, uh, basically run away with it. So, um, basically, we 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 built that in 2019. We were doing Alhamdulillah relatively well in the for for the first year, but then 2020 happened and COVID, as you know, um, 2020 came and COVID happened. But um, the sports industry just went to ruins, basically. Four or five months into COVID, um, I was I was starting to panic. But I sat with the team. At that point, Beth did not exist. We, uh, it wasn't even a thought. Uh, but I sat with the team. <laughs> I sat with the partners and the investors. I told them, look, uh, to be you know, extremely honest, we only have five to six uh, more months of runway of cash left. So we either pivot or we die, basically. Um, I'll tell him, are you willing to take everything we've built and throw it into the trash? And I was scared when I asked that question because we have an amazing team. And um, if the rational answer would be, no, we're not willing and we don't want to stay at a failing company, Arif. But to my surprise, the team stuck. And until this day, I appreciate them so much. Um, And um, then the second part, the, the investors and the partners were extremely supportive, okay. alhamdulillah, and understanding, especially since we were doing relatively well in the first year. <laughs> But basically, I um, told know, if we were going to pivot, it needs to be a pivot to something that we're passionate about and something that um, is challenging enough, something that's, uh, like, something that's worth our time, basically. Uh, To be frank, the first part we figured out relatively easily. We we figured out that uh, we're passionate about gaming and content, the entire team. The second part, which is the pain point or the challenging part we wanted to work on, that wasn't clear. Okay. Um, but let's say, okay, madam, we're, we're passionate about gaming and content. Let's just be traditional um, and take something that has been proven elsewhere and bring it to the Middle East. 
So we said, okay, let's take Twitch and build an Arabic version of it. And um, when we did that, hence the naming, Biz.TV. That's why we called it right. Biz.TV. Twitch, okay. Me, me, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, very traditional, very mm-hmm. hick, any, uh, cliche. But by the end, when we started conducting, we were doing both. We were conducting market research, and time wasn't in, يعني, ما كان لصالحنا الوقت back then. But we were conducting market research as we were building the live streaming platform. Within the first month, uh, it was very clear to us that if we were going to continue building Biz.TV, we were going to fail. Okay. Okay. No, yeah. As we were talking to uh, um, live streamers and gamers, they were telling us, they were very honest. They were like, look, we want to come to Arban and Arab, but listen, if you build this, we're not going to use it. We're, we're going to stick with Twitch. So we that we're not going to build يعني, a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. So we had a problem with each other. We okay, then. Are they facing? Uh, is there any pain point that's you know we're worthy enough of us working on? But we you know there was something weird or something wrong happening, which is gamers were just focused on Twitch and elsewhere, Facebook Live or YouTube Live. They were just focused on live streaming, but they were not focused on um, or dedicating their efforts to publishing content on the short video platforms such as TikTok, okay. YouTube Shorts, and Instagram Reels. But let's just tell them why, because it's in their best interest to be publishing on those right. platforms. So we asked them why, what's stopping you? Basically, two answers. Kept It was a recurring theme. The first one, video editing is extremely overwhelming. The second, social media publishing is, is a tedious. It's a nightmare, basically. It's a okay. tedious process. There are so many redundant steps. Each platform has its own unique set of requirements. Video editing is overwhelming in the sense that you need anywhere between three to six months just to learn the basics. Um, it's not even feasible to, uh, you can't even afford um, uh, outsourcing video editing to, uh, the, يعني, most people cannot afford outsourcing video editing to um, a professional Someone video result. Hakeena, okay, so that's how the idea came about. Okay. We initially wanted to build an Arabic version of Twitch. We ended up with uh, يعني, trying to streamline the entire content creation process. Do you think, just a hypothetical question, do you think today there is a room for an Arabic version of uh, Twitch for gamers? Did the market you know, change? You know what's funny? Actually, now we got the request. Alhamdulillah, we're still small. We haven't hit the scale we want to hit. Right. We are scaling, we are growing, but we're still relatively small. Um, when we talk to, we don't have just gamers. With that being said, we have gamers, we have podcasters, we have marketers, we have different personas using us. But gamers specifically, the same ones that used to tell us if you build a live streaming platform, we're not going to use it, now are telling us, please, if you build it, we're going to help you onboard as many live streamers as possible, wow. mainly because they have issues with Twitch. Who, um, yeah, there are multiple reasons, but to be honest, it's not something uh, at the moment we're willing to... Uh, okay. Uh, especially there's something I don't know if you're familiar with kick.com. Yes. But yeah. there's, a, there's a competitor already okay. who okay. Arabs are liking it. So maybe there is a market need. But, uh, that we're... Uh, and the only reason I'm asking because I know there's uh, KSA and funds in KSA are super <laughs> excited and like super investing in uh, uh, different like uh, gaming startups. And that's why I, I asked. Uh, yeah. This is what uh, bit.tv is. Who could use it? Let's say I'm a podcaster. Uh, can I be using your platform? Is it just for gamers? What's like? Give me the customer journey of okay. I go on. I sign up. What's my customer yeah. journey? So um, I'll answer the two questions. Okay. The first one, um, the personas. We initially started off by catering mm-hmm. to gamers. Then naturally we evolved to the point where we have other personas. I still say, you know, there's a lot that we can do to cater to those other personas, specifically or namely podcasters, educators, and the, uh, any other persona besides uh, the gaming or, or the gamer or live streamer persona. But um, uh, we have yeah, any more or less two main um, personas today using us, content creators like yourself or content curators. I'll start off really quick, uh, quick with content creators because it's uh, more simple as... Uh, okay. Uh, as a concept, they come, they take content from YouTube, for example, like Andrew Tate, who they publish it everywhere. Uh, they just like um, take um, uh, small the snackable clip. meal, small clips. <laughs> Sorry. 
هذا الفيروس لعين فبيسكلي دي تيك ذا سناكبل بايتس ذا كليبس و دي ادت ات ليتل بيت دي اد سب تايتلز تو ات ميبي شويه ميمز او وات ايفر تو انهانس ذا كليب اتسلف و دي ببلش ات ف ذوز ار كونتنت كريتورز دي كان يوز اس وفي كونتنت كريتورز لايك يور سيلف ف اي وود سي ديبندينغ اون regardless of what persona you are you can come to bith you sign up you register then you you can import you can either import your videos directly from youtube uh, facebook or twitch wow, or you can just upload yes so for example let's say this podcast let's say it's an hour long 30 minutes long whatever you can take it directly from youtube mm-hmm. and import it into bith um, instead of having to go through the manual process of downloading right. it and uploading it on bith or of course you can just upload from your uh, from your uh, own device then we take you through a step by step and this is what makes us special we take you uh, at least that's what the, the that's what the creators say uh, their feedback we take you through a step by step intuitive process uh, the first step after importing or uploading um, is resizing your video dimensions to make them compatible um, with um, the short video platforms uh, like youtube shorts uh, instagram reels and tiktok then from there we take you to another step which is the um, uh, um, Uh, auto generated subtitles we help you generate your subtitles uh, irrespective of the language that's being spoken uh, automatically you don't have to type it out you don't have to use wow. the font we will do all of that for you we give you fun fonts um, that are very engaging um, the ones you see on social media who we do it for you we do the lip syncing everything and it's accurate wow. by at least 90% uh, sometimes 100% it depends on your luck and uh, a few different factors um and then there's an extensive uh, library full of media assets such as gifs um sounds music um images videos that you can add on top of your clip to make it more engaging and then from there you just export the video and um, publish it everywhere wow. um i think i'm going to uh, i'm going to move to be a, a bith.tv user after i'm done with بتشرفنا. this episode بتشرفنا. you have this startup build Uh, I kid you're still speaking to your customers. What features are your customers asking for? What features don't they like that are not on Bit.tv today? Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, alhamdulillah, we've, uh, it's, it's both good and bad. It's, it's good that we keep getting customer feedback and we're very close to them. Uh, it's bad in the sense that um, sometimes you have to exercise the information diet. Um, you know, you get so many, uh, like a, tons of requests of people uh, Um, يعني anything from شغلات بس غريبة في شغلات غريبة في شغلات that makes sense في شغلات صراحة لpersonas that هلا it doesn't make sense to steer the product in that direction right. but I would say the three main uh, requests that we got that are relevant enough um, those would be offering a companion mobile app <laughs> that would this is one that we got literally on a uh, on a daily basis um, offering more um, presets and uh, styles for the subtitles um uh, more animations and the fourth one has to do with um ai things like um auto face detection auto okay. motion tracking um those uh, sort of things what's uh, stopping you from adding these features we're building them <laughs> okay we're, we're building them okay. to add to them there's one that we think can really make us stand out that no one else is working on besides those things um which is helping creators become more consistent Um, because we always use the analogy of um, um, uh, content creation being more or less like working out. So let's say, Ahmed, Inta, I don't know if you work out. Mashallah, you look fit. But let's say you don't work out and this is your first week. Okay. Even if you go for five to six days, you break us what you work hard. You can't just expect uh, waking up the following week and uh, seeing your bicep uh, يعني اكبر او تشوف عضلاتك كبروا او انه اذا بدك تو لوز ويت يو ار نوت غانا سي ذات ان ون ويك سو ذا نيم اوف ذا جيم از كونسيستنسي وي سي او ثرو اور اوبزرفيشنز وي نوتس ذات كرييترز اوفتن تايمز ار انكونسيستنت فور ذاتس واي ذي جيف اب بقول لك لسه ماي ماي انجيجمنت از لو ماي كونتنت ساكس لا انه ستيل يو هاف تو جيف ات لازم تعطي الموضوع حقه وفي منهم ذي دونت نو ذات ذي ار بينج انكونسيستنت فوي ثينك ذير سمثينج وي كان دو ذير I I super agree with this. I have this podcast. It's been a year and two months that I have this <laughs> podcast. My I have 300 views, 400 views probably on each episode, 200 subscribers. Amazing. But uh, it's not a lot. But I've interviewed 
top people in the in the MENA region, investors, founders. I've in, I've I've enjoyed these conversations. Uh, and if we look, people don't, like creators don't understand that Mr. Beast before he came, he became Mr. Beast. He started creating videos when he was fourteen years old, and up until twenty two, he he his videos didn't reach anyone. So you have fourteen till twenty one, almost seven years that he was just creating videos without being Mr. Beast. Nothing. You're not getting exactly. anything in return. Exactly. So it takes time. It takes consistency, like you said, and you just have to keep on going and keep on going. Enable me. Uh, how do you evaluate? If Let's say I have a startup and mm -hmm. I'm getting all this customer feedback. How do I ev evaluate what feature I should add and what feature <laughs> I should add? What's, what's a good customer feedback and what's a bad customer feedback? Great question. So, um, okay, I think internally at least we have a criteria okay. based on رأيي or رأيي حدا تاني بالتيم و رأيي أحسن من رأيك in startups it doesn't it's never about opinions that's how even if you're a smart person you eventually find out that your opinion is uh, usually you know stupid صراحة عارف yes. we can't uh, count on our opinions فاحنا we have a criteria internally to عشان هيك to try to simplify it وبعطيك حتى الجواب اكثر مفصل بس higher level الكرايتيريا تاعنا بيعتمد على اربع شغلات the feasibility اولا who the persona is that's requesting this uh, we try to take that into <coughs> into consideration if it's someone who is with all due respect to 60 year old if it's a 60 year old asking for it يعني مش على طول even if you have 26 year old uh, 60 year old asking for something it's not you know خلص على السريع we go and take it نحكي maybe لا that's it, there's a lot of requests coming from that persona but that's not the persona we're trying to uh, to target فمن نطلع who's the current persona احنا we're trying to build for um, okay uh, that's the first thing the the feasibility of the of the request so if it does make sense then we ask the Basically, from a design and an engineering standpoint, how long um, is it going to take us and how much resources is it going to take us to get this feature live, uh, test it out and, and get it out um, to, to basically to creators. Um, so I would say value. Um, what's the actual value to the creators? How feasible is it uh, in terms of resources and, and engineering time? Ooh, um, the third one would be industry trends. We try to yeah. understand what's happening in the industry. Is this something that's going to become outdated soon? But if it's going to become outdated or it's just a fad, then we try not to focus on it. But, um, this is how we set the prioritization. But of course, we have tools come on internally. So we have the emails coming in, usually mm -hmm. emails or social media uh, text DMs. or messages. Me, but but what we try to do, we use uh, an amazing product called Hotjar for qualitative, uh, for the qualitative part. Okay. We watch user sessions. We try to, at least if not on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, to watch, um, um, to watch um, user sessions and see what's happening actually in the user session. Where okay. are they struggling? Where, what's actually happening during the okay. session? We try to reconcile that with um, any inbound basically request that we're getting with quantitative for let's say the audio feature is not being uh, used is it because the library is weak or is it because it's not that important to the creators <laughs> but we try to take as many yani we try to ha we have this uh, criteria to assess we also use quantitative and qualitative touch points or data points to basically um, to make those decisions. We still yani, get them wrong sometimes, but at least we try to remove our own bias or opinions from the process. I hope it answers. Uh, sorry, long no. answer. Mas. No, it, it does. It does perfectly. Uh, are people paying for this? Is it, uh, do you have, like, what, what's your paying tiers? How much are you charging people? Um, so we started monetizing in March. We we released it. Okay. Um, we'll handle until this day. Um, this is something we're actually proud of. We 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 don't spend a single dollar on marketing. But we, when we released the the prior to March, it was completely for free. Okay. Starting March, it became a freemium product where anyone can use it for free, but of course with certain limitations. Okay. So once we introduced the freemium package, um, it's it's either you can use it for free with the limitations, or there's one 
uh, bundle one package, uh, the the pro tier, which is for nine ninety nine per month. <laughs> so, um, alhamdulillah, when we introduced it in March, we started monetizing. And ever since March, alhamdulillah, يعني, uh, the first two months can the monetization خفيف. Then the last two months we've grown by eighty percent and ninety percent uh, our revenues organically. Well, alhamdulillah, our numbers are are يعني, uh, organically or al al revenue level. <laughs> They're doubling every two months. Hala. Uh, are you just are you just focused in Jordan or are you expanding to more countries in the MENA region or what what are your plans? Actually, Jordan isn't our focus at all. Wow. I mean, we love the country, but the size is small. And plus, I mean, we're global. We started okay. regional, and now we believe, inshallah, with hard work and dedication, we can compete globally. So, alhamdulillah, we have creators from more than 50 countries using us over the past 11 months since we've launched in August. Um, currently, we've monetized, alhamdulillah, from the Urdun, but the most popular country we've monetized wow. from. Okay. To our surprise, uh, we have creators who are using our tools from Algeria and Morocco. Wow, okay. Uh, we have from Egypt, we've monetized in Egypt, but um, more free users from Egypt. Okay. We've also monetized from uh, UAE, podcasters, um, who, um, where else? Uh, USA, uh, Britain, uh, Great Britain, and yeah. um, Canada. فالحمدلله يعني عنا هيك different okay. countries mostly GCC و North Africa حاليا. What's the end goal? Like um, how many users or uh, when you said as a team, uh, what's mm. your end goal as a team in terms of where do you want Bit TV to get to? We would love to reach a point where we can help as as many people become content creators. Okay. Um, Will will have the full mission just to become content creators and become famous. That's not what gets us up in the morning. It's more we believe that there, yani, there is so much, um, yani, knowledge or storytelling or stories that can be shared with the world if it wasn't for how overwhelming video editing is. So if we can actually streamline the entire content creation process, then we can, yani, contribute to to having more valuable content out there. فانشالله يعني هدفنا نقدر نوصل point where we can say إنه we're a product that was built out of Jordan and the MENA region but it's a global product and it has helped uh, يعني content creators from all over the world to create valuable content ف okay. يعني that's our vision yeah now I want to ask you here uh, I love what you're doing at Beth uh, at Beth.tv Let's say I'm a content creator. I know you guys are experts in what you're doing. So you guys some, might have some uh, data that might help me as a podcaster. <coughs> Where should I be posting my shorts? TikTok or, or uh, YouTube shorts? Uh, but my short answer would be omnipresent. You have to be simultaneously present on all of those platforms. Um, so both, I would say, TikTok, YouTube shorts, and even the, the ones that perform less, um, like Facebook Reels, for example, I would also highly advise you publishing there. Taban, of course, Instagram Reels. So, yeah, uh, be omnipresent, be simultaneously okay. present on all of those platforms. Uh, what do you advise to creators to have better quality videos or to have videos that follow a trend? Uh, I think uh, trends, uh, I mean, you can always uh, ride the wave, but um, when it comes, my general advice that, our, our general advice from and our like, uh, modest experience would be always make sure that the content itself is rich. That's a prerequisite. Okay. Before worrying about the edits and what to do and what not to do, where to publish, because if the content itself is rich, we always say this, if the content itself is rich, but it's not edited, then you might be... يعني risking people not watching it, um, not capturing people's attention. Um, but if your content is is يعني, if your content is bad, um, it's not what people it's not entertaining or uh, um, um, informative or educational or, or both. Then even if you edit it, chances are you you're gonna be able to hook them the first few seconds, but then you're gonna lose them. So. Right. 
the prerequisite would always be make sure your content is rich because that's a prerequisite. Then once you do that, at least when it comes to shorts, which is now performing extremely well and it's not going anywhere, make sure that the first two seconds are always captivating. Like start off with a hook because the first two seconds, if they're not cap captivating enough, even if the content itself is rich, people are just going to scroll. They're used to doing this, chuk, 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 mm -hmm. you know? Sure. So um, um, that's one of, uh, that's our main advice. The the first two seconds, the content itself being uh, rich and researched um, to gauge people's demand. Then when it comes to the editing part, make sure that it's portrait, of course. Um, make sure that you add subtitles um that's now that like that's one on one basically adding subtitles to make the content be more um viewable and more engaging um and try to add different parts to it like different assets to enhance the story uh, uh storytelling aspect you know um those would be the things and of course uh, publishing everywhere and more importantly being consistent don't stop even if you don't see results keep iterating it's like a startup keep iterating and stay consistent eventually it will uh, it will reach uh, the people you want them to okay. to to watch it what do you think is the future of uh creators in the region in the mina region so um i mean there's a lot of demand for content and just given the the nature of our youth demographics in the MENA region. And we also, like in Saudi Arabia, for example, we have uh, one of the highest uh, um, rates of uh, content consumption per capita. I think it's the highest in Saudi Arabia. So the demand is there. The supply of content is still weak. So I think there's a lot of... Um, um, like, there's a lot of potential for creators to, to, to emerge. Uh, I think... Well, this is already happening, so it's not like a prediction. It's a lot of creators will be able, even micro and macro uh, influencers will be able to monetize and they will be able to make a living out of it. Um, so I, th I think that's one area that will evolve. Micro influencers and macro influencers closing um, uh, brand deals, basically. Um, because usually we were just... Um, uh, Consumers. Influencers uh, are the deals for so we're gonna change that yeah in a way okay yeah yeah Homer, five years ten years from now where's mm -hmm. best TV um it goes back to not to escape uh or to run away from answering it but especially with what's happening now with the AI I would stick and uh, going back to my philosophy of man plans and God laughs um, I would stick with our mission statement, which is making content creation as as easy as possible, um, streamlining that process, and also enjoy, and you know, hopefully uh, helping creators uh, to monetize uh, from their content. But um, yeah, with with AI and everything that's happening, it's so difficult to see what's yeah, and even in the horizon, you know, in the six months from today. But, um, I would stick to just the mission statement and do keep like iterating and iterating within those uh, um, lines. Yeah. Uh, I have two, three more questions that are fun questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say today you drop uh, bit.tv uh, mm -hmm. or you sell it and I come and tell you I'm an investor, here's money, go start whatever startup you, you want to start. Uh, what's, a, <laughs> what's a gap in the market you see that you want to start up? Uh, like, uh, what industry you want to work in? What, what's a startup do you want to start? Um, you'd be surprised. Um, even though we have the best investors, and without them, Bith wouldn't be alive. It wouldn't exist. I I would try my best to bootstrap. Okay. Um. So it it's not easy for me to just like take money. I would try to bootstrap, understand the the pain point. But there's one actually that needs venture capital, and I would love to. Sorry, I would love to work on it. Um, which is helping. Um, building tech that enables individuals to um, calculate their um, or to determine their caloric intake on a daily okay. basis without having to manually um, I love that. scan the uh, scan the foods or um, uh, input it um, into uh, apps like I, uh, my fitness pal. I love that. I would love that if 
Does every night it will tell me, hey, Ahmed, you consume 2,000 calories. 100%. 100%. That's all I need. And this is doing a great job. This with all devices, the wearables, they're doing an amazing job when it comes to caloric. Uh, at the end, you're consuming. Yes. Uh, at the, sorry, at the your expenditure tag, but the consumption, يعني, it's not user friendly. Even yeah. my fitness pal, I yeah. but I would love to fix that. Wow, I I I love this idea. <laughs> if anyone is <laughs> if anyone is hearing us and wants to build this idea, please let us know. Reach out. <laughs> <laughs> Reach out. Uh, uh, If you had all the money in the world, oh, I, I would give you an infinite amount of money. What would be a life mission of yours? What's a problem in the world or in Jordan or in the MENA region or globally that you'd be like, okay, I'm I'm leaving everything and I'm focusing on solving this life mission? Oof. Uh, <laughs> nice question. <laughs> If you give me all the money in the world, yeah. actually, I would love to become a teacher. Oh, wow. Uh, uh... Oh, uh, yeah, I would actually love to become a teacher, especially in <laughs> philosophy and uh, history. Oh. But, uh, but if I had to, if you gave me all the money with the contingency of having to solve something, to, uh, to be honest with you, um, I don't know, but it, it would be something that has to do with helping others. Uh, okay. uh, oh. whatever. Maybe education, because okay. يعني, uh, it achieves that. Uh, Omar, I... It... But let, let me answer this question because I, li- I like to answer this question. Uh, me personally, I would want to solve one of two problems, either uh, aging, so helping people through biology uh, and, and bi- like genetics, not age, live the longer uh, lives possible, or uh, solving uh, energy problem. So energy, definitely. <laughs> if, I believe most of our wars for around the world for the past I don't know how many years have been revolving around oil energy. and gas and energy That's so true. if you solve that problem first of all you stop wars second of all if you could give people free energy then you're giving manufacturers free Maybe electricity yeah. then you're giving everyone free electricity and free energy which reduces the cost a lot on a lot of products and then yes. reduces that cost for other people to come and buy it so I believe energy is the big issue to solve Maybe, yeah. I would love uh, to. I'm mostly an engineering wise. I'm. Uh, <laughs> uh, but amazing, very noble. Yeah. Uh, Omar, thank you for being on the pod. Uh, I really yeah. enjoyed it. I Habibna. after this, we're gonna speak after I end this podcast about how can I become a user of Bit uh, TV. Uh, I I love it. I love what you're doing. Continued success. Uh, <laughs> and and any any last words? Where could people find more of what you're doing? Uh, find more of uh, about bit.tv feel free to do any plugins um i think as as i had to do actually there's an interesting standalone product we're currently working on called okay. bit.ai yeah. which will allow anyone to create content generate content uh, using text only okay. so uh, that's one wow. thing wow uh, okay uh, okay uh, speak more about this like that's really quick um We know that from our research, uh, a lot of creators um, or potential creators would love to create content if it, uh, but they're, they don't like to يعني, show their faces or use their own voices. But basically, we're building Bit.ai, which is a standalone product. It allows you to, using text only, to generate a video from end to end. We help you generate the script. If you don't have one, um, we help you. You can choose... Um, Uh, the visuals we we gather the visuals on your behalf we do the animations on your behalf uh, we literally do the entire thing and of course you have the ability inshallah you will have the ability right. to to hack you know modify uh, mm-hmm. in case you felt um, uh, you needed to fa habine can saad akthar nas to be able to tell stories or to share knowledge without having to use their voices or show their faces fa okay This brings up another question I want, I'm, I'm going to ask to you really quickly. With AI, deep fakes uh, today, uh, all that, from a, yeah. and, and, you, and you love the philo- philosophical part. <laughs> so co- co- combining these two, how, what's, we're, we're stepping into a dangerous zone. I love the technology, yeah. but yeah. what are ways that you <laughs> could avoid the dangerous zones of, okay, we love to create content and everything, but at some point, someone might use uh, this this tool in a very fake way and facebook recently shut down an ai tool they were building 
because of how dangerous they thought it, it, it's going to be. So uh, what are your uh, thoughts here? Thoughts in terms of what exactly? Of, of like, okay, how dangerous this tool is and how can we kind of avoid or minimize the day? Like, let's say someone uses bit, uh, bit.ai and goes and create content that's fake, fake or, or yes. Like, that's what's, a, what's the policy there? I think without policies, we have to uh, we have to understand that um, at a person level, okay. it's only in our best interests. La, يعني لولادنا ولإلنا إنه to be is that إحنا if you're involved in innovating or building in this area, you have to. للأسف even without policies, طبعا صعب بس تعتمد على ضمير الناس, بس لازم يكون عندك الضمير إنك تبني ال innovation. But understanding the the يعني the use. pitfalls or or right. potential dangerous use cases of it, or to try to limit those cases. Or if you don't understand them, if you see them, try to do something about it. But less of like any technology, it has its good, it has its bad. And if uh, this one is a bit scary, صراحة, with everything happening with the AI, so إن شاء الله الكل يكون عنده الضمير إنه ما يخليه to get out of hand. Yeah. True. Um... Omar, again, thank you for being on the pod. <laughs> thank you, Elak Ahmed. I, I really appreciate it. It's an honor. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh,